Hello, everybody. This is Rob Swatsky from the York Campus of Hack, and in this podcast, we'll be reviewing the electrocardiogram, the ECG, and heart contraction. Another value of the ECG is using it to predict the timing of the contraction and relaxation of the heart's chambers. Depolarization causes contraction, also called systole. Repolarization causes relaxation, also called diastole. Let's now correlate the ECG with the timing of the heart's contraction. We'll base it on the resting heart rate of an average adult, which is 75 beats per minute. In the diagrams, green represents depolarization and red represents repolarization. The SA node, also called the pacemaker, found in the right atrium, generates a cardiac muscle action potential, which takes about three hundredths of a second to travel through both the right atrium and left atrium and down to the AV node, which is located at the base of the right atrium. The atrial contractal fibers depolarize, which produces the P wave in the ECG. As the P wave begins, both atria contract during atrial systole. There is a 0.1 second delay at this time as the action potential slows down at the AV node due to the smaller number of its fibers and limited number of gap junctions which help propagate the action potential from fiber to fiber. An analogy for this is when road construction closes three lanes of a four-lane highway and the traffic slows down as everyone gradually merges into the one open lane. This brief delay allows both atria enough time to contract and push blood down into both ventricles. The action potential now moves on to the AV bundle located at the top of the interventricular septum and the normal rapid speed of the action potential is resumed. The action potential now quickly moves down the interventricular septum through both the right and the left bundle branches toward the apex of the heart then up through the Purkinje fibers and the ventricular myocardium. On the ECG, the QRS complex is produced at this time and is correlated with ventricular depolarization. Atrial repolarization is also taking place, but is not visible on the ECG because of the larger QRS complex. Ventricular systole occurs right after the QRS complex, from the apex upwards towards the base of the heart, and continues through the ST segment. As both ventricles contract, blood is pushed up towards the semilunar valves. Next, the ventricles contractal fibers repolarize starting at the apex and then moving up throughout the ventricle's myocardium. This ventricular repolarization correlates on the ECG with the T wave, shown here in red on the graph, taking place about 0.4 seconds after the start of the initial P wave. The ventricles then begin to relax in ventricular diastole soon after the start of the T wave. Ventricular repolarization is finished and both ventricles are relaxed at 0.6 seconds. For the next 0.2 seconds, the contractile fibers in all four chambers of the heart are relaxed. The P wave reappears at 0.8 seconds in the ECG, and then the cycle starts all over again. 